Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. After 16 years with the Game and Fish Department, 850 two-minute North Dakota Outdoors programs, 550 weekly webcasts, Tom Jensen has decided to retire. I will be filling in temporarily as the host for the webcast. My guest this week is Bruce Stillings. Bruce is the big game supervisor here at the Game and Fish. He's also in charge of the pronghorn uh, program here. Bruce, last year at this time, you said all we needed was one more mild winter and the population would probably go in the right direction. You guys just finished your aerial surveys. What did you find? Yeah, we just completed our annual aerial survey last week. We covered just under 11,000 square miles and results from that survey show that we're down about 14% from last year. And yeah, we, we talked last year that if we had that more average or mild winter conditions, we could see a nice increase in 2017. As everybody knows, we didn't get that. We had right. a very severe uh, early winter, especially December, lots of snow, cold uh, conditions moderated in January, sure. February, but we're still saw the effects of that early winter conditions in our survey this uh, July. So, and you're combining that with extreme drought conditions and likely animals have kind of redistributed across their range to find better habitat conditions. And the end result is we have fewer animals this year in the state than last year. But those changes are dependent on management regions. For instance, sure. way down in the southwest part of the state in our Bowman management region, sure. our best habitat, we saw numbers very similar to last year and only down 5%. And the southern badlands, we saw a decrease of about 23%. But the further north you go, the larger decreases that we observed with the northern badlands area down 34% from last year. So it certainly varied by management region. Is it the cold temperatures or the deep snow that really affect the populations? You know, it's that snow amount. It really reduces their ability to move across the landscape to make those long seasonal movements that they need to be able to seek out open foraging areas. And that deep snow also makes it very difficult for them to forage in general. So the worst case scenario is when we have a good base of snow, eight to 12 inches of snow, and then you get a thaw event and then a refreeze. And that sure. kind of puts a, an ice layer across the landscape. And that again, makes it very difficult for animals to move, to get the places they need to winter and then also it's tough for them to scratch through and feed. Um, how many licenses this year compared to last year are we giving out? Yes, we'll have 410 licenses for this year. We'll have five units open. This is down from seven units last year. Okay. Uh, we'll have units, uh, let's see, 2B, 3A, 3B, 4A, and 4C open to hunting this year. All licenses will be, be any pronghorn licenses. So we're, we're down about 320 licenses from last year. How do we determine on whether we're gonna have a season or what units are open or closed? Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah, we have population objectives set up for each management region. And so once the, the population is within that uh, management objective range, then we allocate licenses to try to direct and, and keep within that population objective. And for instance, the, the Bowman County animals, they are on the lower limits of the population ob of objective. So we're gonna be issuing a conservative amount of any pronghorn licenses that will provide some hunting opportunities, but yet encourage the population to grow. Bruce, tell me uh, how, how do you guys do your surveys? Yeah, yeah, we do an, an aerial uh, survey. We fly one mile wide strip transects where we're counting and classifying pronghorn on each side of the airplane one half mile out and the purpose of the survey is to determine pronghorn abundance okay. to assess that year's fawn production and then also to evaluate the, the buck to doe ratio okay. for pronghorn in the different management regions. So it's a lot of time in the plane. A lot of time in the plane, you know, we're we're spending, you know, anywhere ten to thirteen hours a day just actually doing Survey, survey work so wow. it becomes uh, a long long day um, but it's it's necessary work and we've got a small uh, window to get it accomplished and we uh, use four four airplanes and, and spread them out across the range and and get the work done so we can meet the proclamation deadline 
you have these aerial surveys every July. How long has the Game and Fish Department been surveying these pronghorns from the air? Right, yeah, department personnel has been aerial surveying pronghorns since 1958. Wow. And we have one of the most comprehensive surveys in the country. And much of this is due that we're on the eastern fringe of overall pronghorn range. And so we have groups that are typically smaller in size and more scattered, so the best way to assess abundance in North Dakota is to fly complete survey units sure. throughout that period and cover as many areas as you as you can over that survey period time. Now I know the numbers are down. Are there any highlights from the survey that you guys uh, that you guys discovered during the aerial flights? Yeah. Now, although the numbers were were down a little bit from last year, we really did have a uh, a positive in the survey and we recorded the highest fond to doe ratio since 2002 and so this is really encouraging for future population growth that we have a lot of young animals entering the the population in, in 2017 so again that sets us up well if we can get through a, a, a more average winter coming up and and some average fawn production, we could still see a nice bump in 2018. Right, right. Well, you kind of said if we get a nice winter, what what do we need from from here on out through next year to, to see the population of the pronghorn go in the right direction? Right, right. Well, certainly, you know, obviously the immediate need is we need rainfall, not only in the western part of the state, but across the state. Is the it's, drought, does that play a huge part? Well, I mean, it's just the, the dry uh, foraging conditions, it's, you know, poor, poor forage, uh, condition for, for feeding and also the animals are really distributed uh, around water sources sure. this year more so than ever. So with these drought conditions it's likely animals have redistributed and, and maybe moved out of their range, maybe moved you know out, out of the state. So uh, yeah we need to get the, the rainfall for everybody, farmers, ranchers, wildlife, um, improves the, the forage conditions that they need. And then that leads into we need just a more typical winter, um, less snowfall and reduce that adult mortality over that period and then sure. roll over where we can see um, average fawn production for 2018. We're at a point, we still have a base number of animals that we could still see a real nice increase in 2018 if those factors all came together and to be possible to, to have more hunting opportunities, possibly more units open in 2018. Keep our fingers crossed. Keep your fingers crossed. Thanks, Bruce. You're welcome. If you're interested in applying for the 2017 pronghorn season, you can apply online at the Game and Fish Department's website at gf.nd.gov. You can also print an application from the website, or you can pick an application up from a licensed vendor. You can also apply over the phone by calling 800-406-6409. The pronghorn application deadline is Wednesday, August 2nd. For Bruce Stillings and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us this week for Outdoors Online. We'll see you next week.